Somebody grab a record and drop the needle. Or just reach for this keyboard. Check this out. So, Royal Kludge sent me over the new RKM65 mechanical keyboard. And as always, they send me the keyboard to review, but they don't get the review of the video before it goes live, and they don't pay me to say anything special. So, if we jump into the box, the first thing we're met with is our little instruction manual or guide. The guide is really handy. It shows you all your shortcuts on how to change from wireless to wired, or change your backlighting if you want to do function keys. This is handy. Always keep this aside. You never know when you're going to need it while you're getting used to your new keyboard. Next up is your USB-C cable. This is your standard affair. It's just a white USB-C cable. I do like that it's nice and thick, but it's just standard. Next up is your keycap and switch spooler. This is needed because you can change out the keycaps because it is a mechanical keyboard and it is hot swappable so you can pull out your switches. Lastly, you have a bag of extra four cream switches as well as a pry tool. And this is relatively new. This is the second keyboard I received that actually has a pry tool and I love to see it. Like, it's really helpful and I'll show you why in the rest of the video. But other than that, this is what you get inside the box. Now let's dive in and take a closer look. All right, just focus on the keyboard itself. You can definitely see that it hit the inspiration on the mark. The aesthetic is turntable. And you can see right here, it says turntable. And I think they kind of nailed it. The dedicated media keys and the function keys to switch different wireless modes from Bluetooth to wireless, and even your dedicated power switch. I really like the media keys on this. I'm not a huge fan of them normally, but I think with a nod to turntables and music, I think controlling your media from your keyboard kind of really fits that theme. You also have your dedicated knob on the right, controls volume and muting. And then also the 65 layout with the dedicated arrow keys is one of my favorites. You also have a small screen here that shows your battery percentage. So it's a little TFT screen. It shows how charged the keyboard is. So you're never guessing on where your battery life is. If your battery life's getting low, you can simply shut off your RGB to squeeze a little bit more time of use out of it. But if you're fully charged, ready to go, you can have the RGB flaring. It's really up to you. All in all, I really like the little indicator instead of just having LEDs flashing to tell me to how much battery I have left. And if we flip it over the back, you can see that the design keeps going. And I absolutely love this. With the arm to like a record player and then the record itself, you have all the information on the keyboard in the center of the record, kind of like a standard musical record. I think this is awesome. Like this nails it. I know we don't see the back of the keyboard a lot, but this absolutely nails it. You also have your standard dual stage flip up feet. I do like this. They lock into place. They feel really good. There's rubber pads everywhere, so it's not going to be sliding around the desk. If you flip over the back side or the top side, you'll see you have pass through USB and then your USB-C uses for charging or wired mode. And then the other right hand side here, you have these little design elements. These are not buttons. I thought they were buttons to begin with, but they definitely aren't. On the left hand edge here, you also have your storage for your wireless dongle if you want to use it. It magnetizes into place and it feels pretty secure. All in all, this design is pretty cool. I thought it was be kind of gimmicky and I didn't anticipate liking it, but I kind of dig it. But I'm also a music lover, so it kind of hits on some of those strings for me. Now we are gonna test how much flex is in here. And to be honest with you, it's kind of on point. I'm not huge in the flex of my keyboard, so I don't like a ton of flex, but this is gasket mounted and the balance and typing experience feels really good. I feel like there's no real dead spots on the board or no real stiff spots. It feels really even across the entire thing. So let's go ahead and take it apart and see what we're working with inside of it to figure out why it feels so good. So we'll go ahead and grab our keycap and switch puller that came with our board. We're gonna go ahead and pop off a keycap and take a closer look at it. As you can see, the legend's nice and clear. We have colors edge to edge. It's a double shot PBC keycap and it is cherry profile. And honestly, it feels pretty good. They're not the greatest in the world, but they definitely don't feel cheap. All in all, pretty nice. Next, we'll go ahead and pull out one of our switches since we are hot swappable. Closer look here, we can see that it's a Royal Kludge Custom Cream Linear Switch. These are 45 gram linear switches. And surprisingly, they are three pin switches and they come factory lubed. 
Now I do want to note that the board does take 3 pin or 5 pin switches so you won't have any problems if you decide to swap some switches. Next step, we need to take all of our keycaps off and all our switches out so we can keep diving into this board. So I'll see you after that's done. Okay, and with the magic of editing, we have now removed all of our keycaps and switches and we're ready to dive further in. First thing we see is we have plate mounted stabilizers and they are pre-lubed, each of them, which is pretty cool. We also see that we have some foam right here to help with the dust. And then we have a flex cut polycarbonate plate. Now, honestly, I'm not the hugest fan of flex cut, but this isn't overly cut. This is a really moderate amount and it feels pretty good when I type on it. So that's cool. Next, we examine the top to make sure there's no screws. So we're also going to take a look under the feet just to double check there's no screws. To get in the keyboard, we're gonna to need to separate it using the pry tool. We need to separate the clips itself. So we grab the pry tool that it came with. We're gonna run along the edge, across the bottom, all the way around. This should, in theory, separate the top from the bottom, allowing us to gain access to the rest of the keyboard. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is where we started to struggle a little bit. The pry tool it came with really wasn't getting the job done. And I think it's because it didn't have an aggressive angle to actually pop the clips. It was kind of just slightly separating the case, but it wasn't actually getting the job done. As you can see, we switched over to this little blue tool this is a, another pry tool that I have that has a little bit more exaggerated angle, and that did the job with no problem. As you can see, we just slid it around all the edges and the clips popped with no problems. There was no damage to the keyboard and it worked perfect. Now, with this problem, I don't think they should not include the pry tool because I think A, it signifies that you can get into the keyboard, they encourage it, but also I think they should include the second one and I would really love to see if they include both. Like have one that really pops clips and have one that used as a shim in case you need to like pry a little bit more. I think that would be the best of both worlds. All in all, if you're going to open up your keyboard, you might just need a little second tool as well. So just keep that in mind. But once you have it actually all popped and ready to go, we just flipped over back to the top and we're ready to move the top of the case. Now I do want to caution you at this part don't actually just flip it up really fast. There are two cables, one on the knob and one for the media controllers. These cables need to be disconnected before you can remove the top of the case. So you wanna slowly lift up until you gain access to those cables and then you can pull them out with no problem. They're really simple to get out, but they're really, really tight. So there's not a lot of room for you to just get your hands in there and flip this case over. So just go slowly until you get to the point where you can access them and then go ahead and pull them out. Remember, one on the media controller and one to the knob. Now that we have those disconnected, you're free to go ahead and pull up your plate. You'll see that your media controllers and your knob come with it, along with the cover for the screen. This is built into the top of the case while your screen remains on the PCB itself. Now to focus on getting the plate and the PCB out of the case, we're gonna flip it away from us, and you'll see a black ribbon cable. This ribbon cable is the only thing holding the PCB in still. The white ribbon cable goes to the media controls that we already disconnected. However, if you are going to modify the PCB or the plate, go ahead and disconnect that one too. Once you have it disconnected, everything is free. Now you can modify anything you want. We can also take notes of things that we see on the PCB itself. First noting that we have our gasket mounts all the way around evenly distributed. I think this gives the keyboard a really good even feel when you're typing, so that's a nice touch. We can also see that we have foam on our plate and it looks like a switch pad. And then we flip it over the back. We can see we have additional foam as well that's also adhered to the keyboard. And then we have our screws here that we can separate our plate with. All in all, there's a lot going on here. However, I'm not actually gonna take anything apart here. I really like running a switch pad and I really like the foam, but that's personal preference. If you wanna take it off, this is where you'll do it. Lastly, we'll jump over to what's remaining in the case, and that, of course, is a silicone pad. Now, for the past couple months, we've seen this trend quite a bit. And by the quite a bit, I mean with darn near every keyboard we've reviewed. Again, we've had discussions in the comments about the silicone pad, and some people like it, and some people don't. However, this one does feel a bit more dense than previous ones, although it might just be my brain or my hands feeling funny. 
but all in all, it produces a pretty good sound, and it doesn't give you the generic foam thock, which is kind of a cool touch. But setting that aside, we'll focus on our last thing in the case, and that's our batteries. In total, we have 6,000 milliamp hours of batteries that gives us 23 hours of wireless time with RGB at its brightest setting. We also have 248 hours on wireless with RGB at its darkest setting. And you have 600 days of standby time, which is crazy. I used it for a month and only charged it a few times. So all in all, it's pretty good. But now it's time to go ahead and put everything back together. Let's go ahead and look at the software. We'll listen to how it sounds stock, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, so we have the Royal Kludge keyboard software installed. If you have trouble finding this software, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. But you'll simply click your M65. It'll take you to the profile page, and this is where you can assign values. So here, for example, if you want to make the A the number one, every time you press A, it'll now type a number one. If you want to assign it back to default, you'll just right click and select default function. And if you want to assign it something custom, you'll right click, select custom function, and here you can assign it a macro or a shortcut or a multimedia, any of those things. It's pretty simple software to use. Again, I would prefer VIA, but if I don't have VIA, I do want simple software, and this is pretty simple. Next up, you also have your macro manager. Here you can make new macros, you can delete macros, copy, import, export, anything to do with macros can be done here. So say you can record a macro and then you can go back to your profile and assign it to a key. Pretty simple. Next up will be your lighting effect mode. There's a bunch of lighting effects that are already built in for your RGB. Once you select them, they'll update to the keyboard automatically. You can also change your brightness levels, your animation speed, and your wireless sleep time. Your wireless sleep time goes from five minutes to no sleep, so if you walk away, you can save some battery. You also have custom colors if you wanna change colors. Lastly, you have custom lights. Here you can sign custom lights, so if you wanna change colors or any patterns, you can do so here. I would also like to mention that you don't need the software to actually customize your RGB. If you head over to your keyboard and hold function backslash, you'll be able to actually change your RGB lighting mode. Every click will change the mode to a different pattern, and you can find one that suits your best interest. Also, alternatively, if you feel like changing the brightness of your RGB, you can do function down to make it dimmer, or function up and it'll make it brighter. It's pretty simple. You can also change the speed of the animation. So if you do function left, it will slow down the animation, and function right will speed up the animation. Lastly, if you found an animation you like, but you don't like the color, you can hit function comma, and it will actually change the color of the animation. And then this works for any of the animations. So play around with it, figure out which one you like, and you'll be good to go. And with that said, let's go ahead and hear how this keyboard sounds. So let's talk keyboard. And honestly, it's kind of surprising. And I mean like a lot surprising because it's cool. It's got a cool aesthetic. And I didn't want to like it. I didn't anticipate liking it, but I do. I don't like a themed keyboard because I like to make my own theme. So a prepackaged theme doesn't really fit my narrative most of the time, but this does. 
I really like old retro music and old retro video game music. And this really fits that vibe. And I could see it on the desk of other people that have that vibe as well. Not to mention all the features it has from 2.4 gig wireless, Bluetooth, battery screen, all the foam, lube stabbed, lube switches, like the list goes on and it's $65. And that's not on sale or anything, it's just $65. So if it does go on sale, it'll be cheaper than $65. But all in all, it's your preference. If you're into old video games and video game music, or if you're just a music person, dedicated media keys, control your music, and the keyboard is old music throwback. If it fits your vibe, definitely get it. I think it's a great keyboard. $65 definitely feels like a wheelhouse price. But all in all, it will always be up to you because it's your preference. But let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you made it this far in a video, please like and subscribe. And if you want to pick up the keyboard or even check it out, the link will be description below along with the link to the software. And that's it. The end. And as always, keep keyboarding.